You're listening to Slightly Warped, the podcast that tackles topics from every angle. Here's Richard Kearney and Ryan Foley. Hey, 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 welcome to another episode of Slightly Warped. I'm Rick, joined as always by Big Show. Show, my man, how you doing? What's happening? I'm doing good. It's Tuesday. It's beautiful outside. Yeah. I'm good. Every day above ground is a good day. Yes, sir. So, um, we got a couple things to go through today. And I want to kick off with this. Um, You're right. Your boss is wrong. All right. What I'm getting at is tips and gratuity. Uh, Obviously, if you are in the food service world, you're used to that, especially waiters and waitresses. But in other professions, you are told up front by your employer, you're not allowed to take any outside money from other companies. And I believe that in some cases, that may be okay, but I don't think that that should be a hard and fast rule for every profession like that. Um, I want to ask you before I get off into it, um, do you think accepting tips or anything of monetary value from a company is just blatantly wrong? Blatantly wrong, no, but it depends on the business. I, and I can see that. Um, I, I came across a situation where we'll say someone was told that they could not accept anything from an outside person, yet that company clearly accepts things from outside companies and shares with the um, with other members of the staff so to speak. So that's why I'm thinking that's wrong. Yes. Um, Now, this particular person, are they not getting shared with while other people are? Are they part of... They they are, but for what they do, um, someone offered them some extra for doing it, but they were told, no, you, you can't accept that. Now, me personally, if somebody offered me something, what kind of business was it? Can you say without? I I cannot. I, with with without their consent, I I'm I'm not gonna get off into gotcha. it. I'd say without divulging their information, but that really depends because if it's a uh, like a something that that person could do on the side, um, I could see the company like having a non compete where you can't do that type of thing yeah and i can definitely see a non-compete well i mean even okay so i'm in the trucking business right and i'm a dispatcher so i mean that's not what i do now i run the company but if i just say just a dispatcher and he dispatches trucks and you know we have this group of loads and he has to disperse it and everybody needs needs to make an an x amount of dollars per week for everybody in the in the whole team to be profitable well, let's say one driver walks up to dispatch and says, hey, I really like these good paying loads. I tell you what, I'll, I'll make your car note every month if you give me those loads. That's wrong. Yeah. But it's kind of, the, it's no different than a tip. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it really depends on the business. Now, I've been in this trucking business a long time, and I've had that same conversation right there. I had a driver mm. wanting to make my truck payment. Man, was it hard to say no. <laughs> Woo. About 20, 25 years ago. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, that would be a tough one right there. But I'm thinking you're probably better off saying no because that could have came back on you something terrible. True. And then, you know, and with these, you know, just keeping it generic, if the company that that person works for gives out bonuses for, 
you know, making a particular quota or whatever, then they shouldn't accept the tip because they're going to get rewarded regardless. Yeah, I can see that. All right, I'm going to segue that into our our, our tip-top uh, story of the week. Uh, rules that were made to be broken. And these rules... Speed limit. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would be nice. Uh, a, a lot of it's based on um, what we're told when we're younger, but it really doesn't matter. But some of these apply to us right now in today's world. Uh, I'm just going to go through a few of them. And as I go through each one, give me your thoughts on it. Uh, the All first right. one, society says you can't do anything your friends don't approve of. I call BS on that. What do you think? Oh, yeah, BS, big time. Yeah, that was an easy one. They get if hard. they're your real friends, they're not going to disapprove. Exactly. I mean, unless you're a serial killer. Well, yeah, you know. You know, hey, if they, I really want to go out and kill people, and my friend says, hey, maybe not a good idea. I, sh I might want to listen to them. Hey, that death and dismemberment thing, that'll land you in jail. So, yeah, you probably don't want to do that. <laughs> Look, Jeff, you don't need to eat those guys, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but Hannibal did it. <laughs> All right. Uh, second one. Uh, unconventional life choices will lead to ruin. Such as? <clears throat> it just says that in there. Um, I, I, I don't agree because many unconventional... Yeah, and, and they could actually put you on a path to success, too. It just depends on what that unconditional life choice some is. Of the, some of the most successful people in this planet think, you know, un, un, what, what was that word you just said? Unconventionally. Unconventional. I was about to say unconditional, but that's, that's something no, different. That, yeah, that's a different one. We probably <laughs> want to follow that rule. Okay, now, they say... If you don't make the right choices to begin with, you're screwed because you can't go back and change them. That's too generic because there are things you can go back and change. And there are some things that you need to get wrong in order to grow. Yeah, most successful people fail more than they succeed. So, yeah, I wouldn't. Uh, yeah, I call BS on that. Uh, this one. Oh, yeah, I don't like it. Keep your faith to yourself. Mm, no. I mean, that's the whole point of your faith is to share it with others. And I'm going to get further off into that when we go into sports later uh, because of after a certain game. But, um, well, we'll save it for that. We'll save it for that. But, yeah. Yeah. You should always share your faith if you have the chance. I'm not saying run it down somebody's throat. Well, but... I mean, but it depends on the faith, too, because that's a Christianity. That's a Christian answer, what you just said. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's other religions, you know, that don't necessarily share. You know, there's I agree with you. It needs to be said. But if somebody doesn't, it's OK, too. Yeah. All right. Um. Asking for help or allowing people to see that you're not perfect means you're weak. I call BS on that one. It's okay to ask so for help. Society, society says that. Society, yes. Um, you know, but that's something I struggle with all the time, though, just being a man. Oh, yeah, that leads it, into the next one. You know, Men don't not... cry. I call BS well, on that one. We do cry. We do yeah. cry, but we but when we cry, nobody gives a crap. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. So we cry, we cry when we're alone. Yeah. All right. Now, they say when it comes to people, there are no gray areas ever. I call BS on that one. There's nothing black and white in this world. There's gray area in certain things, especially when it comes to people. Overall generic, yes, yeah. I would agree with you. But, you know, I'm just old gray beard jumping on said soapbox for just a nanosecond. You know, all of these gender identifiers that are in the world today. 
I, I have a hard time with that. You know, that's that's too much gray. Okay. You know, you have kids identifying as cats in school. Yeah. You know, so no, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but stepping off because that's a whole nother tangent we don't want to go into. But, you know, so I guess it really depends on. But generically, yes, I agree with you. Here's one. Children should always listen to adults because they know best. No. I know some children that are way smarter than some old folks, but, you know. Not that's even that. Story. Adults will steer children in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. So, no, I definitely disagree with that. And I'll fight anybody that wants to argue about it. Not physically, I mean verbally. Debate. The word gotcha. is debate. Gotcha. I would <laughs> debate anybody that thinks that. You must never go to the cinema alone. I haven't been to many movies by myself. <laughs> That's a rule? That's a rule. Wow. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm going to get detention because I've been to the movies by myself. <laughs> uh, here's one. You must go to university. No, you nope. don't. Some of the most successful people in life never even graduated high school. Especially a lot of these old school millionaires. It doesn't necessarily help you succeed. It doesn't necessarily set you on a path for succeed for a successful uh, career. You know, um, my wife yeah. has two degrees, and neither one of them she does in real life. So, it, yeah, to know, me, so. Uh, success is more about determination than where you come from. Yes. So. Um, or what must, school you go to. Exactly. You must get married. You must have children. You must be family focused. Okay. We'll start back. What year were these rules written? That's what I want to know. I, I don't know. Now, obviously, if you are married, have children, you should be family focused. But not everybody's into that. Some people don't want to get married. Some people don't want kids. So to say you must, who, who are we to say you must? Right. No, nah, it people must not be married. <laughs> they don't have to be if they don't want to be. They don't have to have kids if they don't want them. And if they're thinking about having kids, I have three or four. I can rent to them if they'd like to try it out for a while. Just let me know. Comment below. I'll get you the information. Oh, there you go. Uh, growing up or living in poverty is your fault. No. Yes. You think that should be a rule? Not a rule, but I think that that's an accurate statement to a certain extent. I don't. I mean, think about the first part. Growing up, you're not in control until you're able to work for yourself. So the growing up part's already wrong. There's nothing you can do about okay, that. Okay, the growing up portion, I agree. But remaining in that way is a choice. I will I will agree with you on that part. Yeah. Um, oh, this goes back to the kids thing. Adults know best. No, we don't. And that leads into the older you are, the wiser you are. Like I said, I know some old fools out there. I would I would I would tend to agree that the the older you get, the wiser you become about life in general. But that doesn't mean you're going to make the wise decisions when said decision comes to you. Um, this last one is the best one here because I vehemently disagree with it as I struggled to get my my lights my lights right here. The customer. Is always right. <laughs> no. I've been in retail and I've been in management, that part of retail. And I can tell you for a fact, the customer is not always right. Sometimes the customer is so wrong, it's so blatant. And I'm not talking about today's customers. I'm not talking about the Karens of the world. I'm not even going to go there. I'm just talking about people that are so privileged that they believe that just because they've shopped with you for four or five years, you should either get a discount or 
I've had these longer than 90 days. I should get a return. Now, no, you shouldn't. It says on the receipt. But the customer's always right. Not in this case. Not to get off on a tangent on this, but no, no, no. The customer is not always right. And I know that some people who are, feel they're privileged, they don't even know that they're saying or doing things that are wrong because they do feel entitled. And it's just one of the things I can't stand is entitlement. I, I just feel like, you know, think before you speak. If your receipt says 90 days and you've had it for five months, you're not going to get a return. Nope. And, you know, God gave us two ears and one mouth for a reason. We should listen before we speak. So, yes. Exactly. Customer is not always right. Hardly ever are they right. Let's go into sports, bro. And the reason why I'm starting off in the sports early, I want to go back to that thing we were talking about religion. Um, My team played. Finally won. Because uh, I would have been on suicide watch. But that's another story. After the game, uh, Carr and Wilson uh, switched jerseys, you know, jersey swap. It's the norm in the NFL now. But instead of just uh, signing them, they both signed. And, you know, they either put vi Bible verses on there or, um, you know, uplifting sayings on each other's jersey. And to me, that's a wonderful thing. I like how my quarterback is a very spiritual person and he puts his family first. I do like that. I, when I was reading the article, there was somebody who naturally made a comment. God should not be in sports. And I'm just going to put it out here to those people who believe that. First of all, you're wrong. God is in every aspect of our lives. Now, before I jump on that soapbox and start preaching, I'm, I'm going to scale it back, but I'm just going to say he's in every aspect. If he's not in sports, why is he involved in your job? If he's not in sports, why is he involved in your home? You know, you, you don't get a part-time God. He's either there or he's not there. And I know somebody said, well, God doesn't care about a touchdown pass. He don't care about your check either, but you still praying to make money. You still praying to keep that job. You still praying for that car. What if God tells you, why don't you walk? You wouldn't like that. So, you know, if you're going to worship a God that's everywhere, know that he's everywhere. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Got to keep it on track. Your, your nothing, else on needs, nothing else really needs to be said. Um, I, I enjoy when athletes, when I find out, you know, the athletes that are super spiritual versus the fake ones, you know, um, but that doesn't, you know, I separate that from the athlete and the man himself. You know what I mean? I, I kind of keep that separate. Yeah. A uh, car and, still sucks as a quarterback, but God oh, bless now, him. Now this doesn't for, just, for this doesn't just, servant. I, this just <laughs> doesn't just pertain to, uh, Derek Carr. This no, I know. To, no, I definitely understand that. Yeah. This goes I back to uh, me and uh, listening to Kurt Warner. You know, oh, I wasn't yeah. like a huge Ram fa Rams fan, but Kurt, you know, he, he His always. His story is phenomenal. Exactly. And, yeah. and, and, and I just really like people like that. Um, and, and, and the reason why I thought of it is because, you know, we were talking about that society rule earlier. Mm -hmm. No, and, I like it. Yeah, and, and I'm just like, why not? You know, why not? Um, it, it, we're not beating anybody over the head, but at the same time, sharing a little bit of our faith, sharing a little bit of, you know, who we are, how we got to where we got to be. And let's be honest, it's between two people. It was between Russell Wilson and Derek Carr. Who really cares what anybody else thinks about it? That national sports writer, whoever responded to it, who cares? It was Derek Carr saying, hey, I'm going to give this to you. Russell Wilson said, hey, I'm going to give this to you. And, you know, it doesn't exactly. matter to anybody else, period. Exactly. Now, <clears throat> to the games. My man Derek finally did what he was supposed to do when the pocket collapsed. Get out of the pocket. 
Run, mm-hmm. Derek, run. I thought that was watching Lamar. <laughs> okay, maybe not that much. <laughs> not that much. But uh, he needs to do more. Hold on. Time. When I was watching Lamar, I thought I was watching Derek Carr. Did you see that interception <laughs> in the end zone? <laughs> I saw that. All they had to do was run it and kick the field goal. Yes. Wow. Um, I was proud of the Raiders uh, for winning. Um now it's a tall that, test coming up this week, though. No, the Broncos, man. <laughs> the Broncos are a NFL's prime example of poor coaching. Questionable and just decisions. Just in general, you know, they're 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 not a good athletic football team. They have good athletes. Yes. But they don't have good their offensive line is suspect. They have a couple of defensive guys that are okay. Their Clearly, secondary. their running back is suspect. If this yes. was the fourth game and his fourth fumble of the season, I'm not uh, mad that he fumbled because that gave us the Well, lead. you're talking about the Gordon. old Chargers, the old Chargers running back, right? Gordon? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but they just lost Javante Williams, their star running back. He's gone for the year. He blew his ACL out in that so game. So it was a torn ACL. Yeah, he's done for the year. Ooh. Um, they better know, teach so Melvin just, Gordon how to hold onto that ball high right. and tight. You know, um, I think the 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 better part of Russell Wilson's playing days are in his past. Um, he just seems, just eye test wise to me, uh, he's a little slower, a little bit more uncomfortable. You see flashes. You see him at moments where he avoids the rush and runs, you know, and gets the first down, or he throws them long bombs to the wide receiver. You see flashes. I, I just don't see him. I don't see him being Peyton Manning as what the Broncos are wanting him to be when they signed Peyton Manning out of free agency. You know what I mean? Because that was their initial thing. Let's go get a. A veteran wide receiver, I mean, a veteran quarterback, and let's, you know, let's ride, you know. But no, their they're, they're car's got flat tires right now. Looks that way. Now, the Chiefs were a lot more efficient this week. Man. Um, they build them double digit leads, and all the announcers can say is, well, they miss Tyreek. No, they don't. I am so tired of hearing about Tyreek Hill during a Chiefs camp. Then you better I'm hope so Tony Romo it. isn't the uh, color commentator. It doesn't matter who it is. They all say it. I'm just so tired. Who He's not on our team. It's like Tyreek Hill. Yes, I love. I would still love to have him in red and gold. Don't get me wrong. But it's not like we won the Super Bowl every year with him in on our team. It's, you know, he's not. He's not going to be Deion Sanders that whoever team he gets on, they're going to win a Super Bowl. Or like, uh, what, what's the linebacker that now plays for? Uh, oh, uh, uh, Denver's line. Buffalo. I mean, uh, Buffalo's yeah. linebacker. Yeah, I know. Who you know, about, it's not the name. It's not going to be the same same thing. Um, shit, I see the Dolphins circling the toilet bowl right now with Tua's issue. You know, so. Here's here's a here's a great thing I heard today on the radio when they were arguing about the Chiefs offense. And they were saying, you know, is it uh as explosive as it used to be or as dangerous? And the guy says, No, it's not as explosive, but it's just as lethal. I would agree with that statement. And that you means know, they, they can hit you from anywhere now. If we can run the ball like we did against Tampa Bay, look out. Because that, that's going to keep defenses honest. Keep them out of that cover two shell. They're going to have to bring them safeties up to stop Pacheco, who looks like he's trying to crush the ground every time he runs. He reminds me of Tamar Vanover, the way he runs. That just yeah. hard plodding, just I'm angry and I'm going to just make sure I'm smushing everybody down when he runs. Uh, you know, if we can do that, look out. We're gonna be we're gonna make some noise. Yeah. I, I can't disagree with that. I mean, I really do hope that um Max Crosby breaks something on your Patrick Mahomes this weekend, but you, you really know. wish injury on Patrick Mahomes? 
just a simple injury, just something to keep him out of the game, not not out of the season. Man, I that's mean, not you know, right. It's I don't not. wish anything ill will against your team. Well, I mean, you know, the only way we're going to, uh, you know, defeat him is to get him off the field. Why? You beat us a few years ago. Mm, that's true, but I think Andy's ready for this now. If the Colts can beat us, the Raiders can beat us. That Yeah, that's true, but I think y'all went into the Colts game looking like, ah, oh, we ain't worried about it. We got this, and kind of got right. blindsided with errors. Right, because we were playing Tampa Bay the following week. Yeah. Who do we play next week? Uh, let me pull that up. So You don't can, have to uh, look it up. Buffalo. Oh. Oh. Oh, my. So are we overlooking Las Vegas? Las Vegas, L O S S Vegas. Are we are we looking over them? Because Buffalo's coming up. I don't think we are, but uh, you never, never know, know because uh, you you the the past couple of victories, y'all have hit the forty point margin or close to it. So, what I enjoy about that game is that we scored twenty eight points in the first half. And Tampa Bay had only given up seven or twenty-seven points in the first three games. Period. Yeah. Um, so I enjoyed that. You guys, and you know, much the game was not defense. as the games was not the game was not as close as the forty-one thirty-one score. No, Brady had a lot of garbage touchdowns. Oh yeah, because he was down by th three scores most of the game. You know, um, but. Slipping away yeah. from the AFC West for just a second while we're talking about Brady, do you think his current marital situation is affecting his game? Yes. Did you hear the news today? No, I didn't. What's up? Uh, Giselle and Tom Brady have hired divorce lawyers. Mm. So, and this is just me. They can't patch this up. It's gone that far just because he came out of retirement. I don't know. You see that picture with Antonio Brown? That picture with Antonio Brown, Antonio Clown, was being an a-hole. I he know he had, was, but maybe there was something to it. He did live with them. Mm, mm, mm. If something like that comes out, woohoo! Well, I tell you, Antonio Brown be catching his hands while I'm still waiting. Over Man. that picture alone, I'd be like, hey, come work out with us. We want you back. <laughs> and meet him in the locker room with a sock full of soap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that. Uh, now I and I and I did look it up and there were quite there were it was it was in the New York Post or something like that. So I I'm, I'm I can't guarantee that it's a hundred percent legit story, but the person that I heard it from is a legit guy that reports on the chief stuff, and he just happened to put that on his Facebook and said that they both hired divorce lawyers. So I don't know if something's going on with him. You know, something in their relationship. If, I will if, say if this, him coming if, back to play was a, was a rule breaker for them. I don't know if she's so pissed that he went back to football. She's a lonely girl, and if she's a lonely girl, that lonely, that would tell me that's a red flag right there that she would do something to not be lonely while you're away. Just me. Well, she ain't gonna, she's, she's a supermodel. She ain't going to be lonely for long. Oh, I know. I know. Mm. Neither is Tom. No. So um, Tom, terrific. Oh, my God. He, he you know, like just... Speaking of the union of marriage, I hope that they work it out. You know, yeah, so I do have, too. Because you hate they to have see children like and that. everything. So I, I hope, I hope that they do work it out. And, and that was my whole point in the first place when you when you broke that. Um, that's no reason for a divorce. It just isn't. Let the man play one more year. Let him play two more years if he wants to. And as rich as they are, I don't want to hear anything about. Well, I want to pick up my career you can y'all got names well, you know and i think also just playing devil's advocate from giselle's point of view mm -hmm. i think tom brady's being selfish by playing a little bit i get that you got the urge to compete but you yeah. have nothing to prove and you have your full health <laughs> 
What happens in two weeks if you are laying on the field like Tua? Mm. You know, how's that going to affect the future with Giselle and the kids? You know, I, I get it. You know, you want to compete, be a coach, do something that way. Well, he already got that $375 million broadcasting waiting for him when he Right. Retires. I mean, I know it's I, difficult. I'd be like, cut the check. Here I come. Right. So, so there's something else, and that's what makes him so great. And and there will be nobody to ever touch his greatness, in my opinion, um, in our lifetime. But there's something driving him to do that. But I hope that he doesn't pay a big price for that decision that affects his future, you know. And he's walking around like Earl Campbell, hardly able to walk, you know. Yeah. He's just... I just hope I hope and pray that that didn't happen. And that's the thing we say about every athlete. I hope that they can walk away and not be carted away. Right. And I know he has this drive. He has this motivation. That's a good thing. But you also got to know when to walk away. And he has nothing else left to prove. Nothing. If he won another Super Bowl now, great. If he doesn't, he still goes down as one of the greatest. Can't quite bring myself to say the greatest, even though I know. He, better, I mean, the, he is the greatest. Name yeah, somebody I, greater. I wait. I, I can't. You can't. Um, there isn't anybody even. I mean, in the conversation. I can't name anybody who's won more Super Bowls. But depending on the era that you watched, you could say He's Joe leading. Montana. Mm, even Joe Montana wasn't as good a quarterback as Tom Brady is. Yeah. And how many rings Montana Montana have four? Four. Yeah. <laughs> why did you why did you go Scarface right then? <laughs> how many rings does Montana have? <laughs> Montana. Tony great. Montana got four rings. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. All right, show. I want to go over some of these games this weekend because I still can't quite figure out this season, especially after the Monday night game. Um, that yeah. was so ugly. Yeah, it was. I wouldn't say the Niners couldn't beat the Rams, but 24 to 9? Come on. Well, but also if um, they've beaten 49 or I mean, the 49ers have beaten the Rams the last seven games oh, okay. that they played. So they're on, it's kind of like, you know, the Chiefs and the Broncos. You know, I think, uh, I think. We beat them the last the, the last nine games that we played them. So yeah, um, they Broncos just have, have a very good AFC West record because we've we haven't lost the Broncos in almost thirteen hundred days. Man, you counted days. I went into years. I, well, <laughs> it, it didn't sound quite good if I just said two seasons. I could say two and a half seasons, but that doesn't. You mean. said four games, five games. Yeah. I know it's, it's five. Like nine it's, yeah, games. it's five right now. It'll be six coming up in uh, whenever we see them in December. Did they just play in Las Vegas? Yes. Oh, so you got to go to my high. I don't yeah. know. Y'all might lose that one. I, nah, we, we'd we be all right. We'd be all right. You might. You might lose it. That's all I'm saying. If if they haven't gotten their fourth win by then, you know, I'll be concerned. Let you tell it they only good for four or five. So, you know, once they reach that thre threshold, hey, I think we're if safe. If you go back and rewatch the episode, I said I, I wouldn't be surprised if they won six or seven. But mm -hmm. I'm sticking with five and 13 just because I just – I don't see them beating a whole lot of people in the division. I just – I don't. It's to funny. me, that's six losses right there. Yeah, that's true. Now, this is in the AFC, but it's not in the division. The Thursday night game coming up is the Colts are at mile high. That is a head-scratcher because the only way the Colts beat the Chiefs was, as we mentioned, the Chiefs were looking ahead. Too many mental errors. I don't... What's I want the head-scratcher on who's winning? Is that what you're saying? Yes. I want to say the Colts because the Broncos... What they're going to have to do to win is to clean up the uh, errors, coaching and play-wise. Mm. Because it's hit mile high, though, I'm kind of leaning towards the Broncos in an ugly game. Yeah, I'm going to pick Denver. 
um, just because it's at home. But, man, that's difficult because mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure I picked them to lose on the deal. No, nope, I'm going Indianapolis. I'm changing my mind because they still <laughs> they can only win five games. So Denver's going to lose this one. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if Denver pulled out a shocker. Um, the Colts are not bad. They're opportunist. They were opportunistic against us. Yeah. And then they had some referee help, and we had some special teams blunders. Quite a few of them. And and people out there that say special teams don't matter. Just go back to that game, and you'll see that they indeed do matter. Hell, look at the first week of the game. You know when Cincinnati and Pittsburgh played. Special teams matters. Um, but, oh man, I, I know. I, it, it, I picked Denver to lose. I'm changing again. Denver's going to win. Ugly okay. game. Denver's going to win. All right, y'all. Y'all heard it here first, second, and third. Um, now here's the AFC West team we haven't talked about: the Chargers. But they're at the Browns. I'm I'm going with the Chargers because from what I saw last week, I think their firepower is back. And who are they playing? Tennessee? Nope, the Browns. No, who were they playing last week? Oh, uh, let me look here. See if it tells me. Oh, I can't. Where are the Chargers at? They're playing Houston. Did they play Houston? They- they were playing the Texans. No, the Texans played the Broncos. Oh wait, I went too far. That was that was week three. I'm sorry. Week four is where I needed to be, isn't it? Did the Chargers play the Jaguars. They lost oh, thirty eight to ten. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, right. They lost okay. thirty eight to ten. Yeah. yeah so um thirty eight to ten. Yeah, I take back that firepower statement. Who um, lost to third who lost? The Jaguars. No, that was week. No, no, that that was was that week three. Jags beat Chargers week three. I picked that game. I'm pretty sure that it was. Uh, I want to say Houston. Okay, maybe I did go too far. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right. It was the Texans. They did yeah. win thirty four to twenty four. Yeah, it was a closer game, and Houston sucks. This um, is true. And yes, they had their five. Austin Eckler went off in that game. Um, yeah, he did on the on the highlights that I seen. Um, I I just I'd have to go back and look at the at the stats and stuff. And go ahead, I'm gonna do that while you're talking because I'm curious as what how, what their run defense was like. All right, well I'm gonna go with um, the Chargers because I think the Browns are just a hot mess. Um, you know, at the beginning of the season, I wanted to say. It wasn't the Browns that was the hot mess. It was um, Baker Mayfield. But I think whether they're together or apart, they're both a hot mess. They're like that bad relationship where both parties suck. And you can't take a side because they're both wrong. And the, the Browns will see, eventually get it together, but not against the Chargers. See, this is what you got to look in between the lines, okay? The Browns are not a bad football team. They don't have a quarterback. That's worth the darn. They got wide receivers. They got running back. They got offensive line. They got defensive line. Linebacker, eh. Safety, average. L.A. gave up 131 yards rushing to the Texans. Quick, name me the Texans running back. Can't do it. Exactly. You can't. But Bradley or or uh, Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt. I'm going yeah. Cleveland. Okay, okay. You know, I like that. That leaves two more teams in the AFC West. Uh, Who are the Raiders playing this week? I think the Chiefs got a bye. Oh, see, that's just dirty. <laughs> that's just dirty. <laughs> and, and you know what? I hope y'all do overlook us like you did Indianapolis. I really you do. Won't. We won't. I know, because every team gets up for Raider Week, especially the Chiefs. So you picking the Raiders? Man, do I want to go with my heart or do I want to go with my head? 
why should I abandon my squad now? Why should I do that? I mean, the sun shines on dog's ass at least once a day. I'm going with the Raiders. Upset special, baby. And it won't really. You heard it here, folks. This is the beginning of Rick having Alzheimer's, forgetting what's going on. But I, too, am picking the Raiders. To lose. Oh, uh, I was getting ready to say. The Chiefs will win. Chiefs will win. Hmm. All right. So everybody watching this, I help a brother out. <laughs> Put in the comments what you think on any of these AFC West games. Um, Me personally, I think that I might be slightly wrong. But Big Show is more warped, like how I did that, <laughs> slightly warped. <laughs> but we will see on Sunday. As a matter we of fact, will. is that the Sunday that I could No, that's it? Monday night. Yeah, that's we the Monday, Monday night. Monday game. night. Yes. Okay, 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 okay. Monday night in Arrowhead. I'm I'm getting ready to change my pick. <laughs> I'm getting ready to change my pick. Kansas City gets up for the month. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I take that back. Because when we have beat y'all, it's been in prime time. No, it hasn't. Yeah, special Thursday night games when we always wear our silver. That we was win. 1990 what? That wasn't 1990. What? It was a couple of years ago. Derek Carr was still the quarterback. Anyway. That was not a Thursday night game. That was a Sunday noon game when y'all beat us and did the little loop around the track. No, no. Around that was a Sunday game. That was with Gruden. I'm talking about two years before with Del Rio. Because that was when they kept having that untimed down, and we finally scored. I See, I don't, even rem- I don't even remember that. I remember it. I, I I had to hold on to that. Patrick Mahomes was not playing, correct? He was not on our team That then? was Alex Smith. That was okay. Alex Smith. The defense rest, your owner. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Hey, um, but I, I'm proud of you. Stick with your guys. I'm proud of you. Hey. I abandoned hope. I told I said the Bucks were gonna beat us last week. I, I can't I, was, I can't do it. I was still I was still a little butt hurt over that Colts game. So now <clears throat> will I be upset if we lose? Not as upset as I was when it was the Cardinals or the um who are the hell else we played in week I guarantee one. you won't be upset if they lose, but you will be overly ecstatic if they win. There you go. There you go. Um, Nothing wrong with that, but, man, y'all going to be one and four when we have this conversation next week. If, if we lose and we have we, – if it's a close game, and keep in mind their three losses have all been six points or less, I, I, I think that we There's can, no moral victory, brother. No, I don't I don't like moral victories, but I think that there's some things that we can learn from it. If it's a straight blowout, <laughs> there's nothing to learn from that. You just got your ass whooped. I'm I'm jumping on here. I want to see your guys' schedule. Okay, so after like us we have a bye week next week. Yeah, you have a week, a bye week after that. Then you got then we Houston, start getting winnable games. Houston, New Orleans, Jacksonville, Indianapolis. That Denver, Jacksonville game is probably going to be tough. Seattle. Man, you might go on a roll here. Jacksonville might be tough for you. But I don't see you losing again until maybe Seattle. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, we you can make the Chargers. G- we can make Geno look like Geno again. You need not worry about that. Man, you have a reasonable – you have a fairly reasonable schedule to turn this crap around. Yeah. So all all hope isn't lost if you lose, when you lose. Sorry. Ouch. Just right in the gut. Right in the gut. Sometimes truth hurts, buddy. <sighs> Maybe if we do it right. The announcers will continue to say, well, they really missed Tyreek Hill tonight. <laughs> they will. They will say that. I guarantee it. Every pundit from here till next year is going to say it. Kelsey had to take that 15-yard out route and run it all the way up the field as opposed to Tyreek Hill, who would have already been in the end zone. They missed right. Tyreek Hill. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
I oh. actually like the I actually like the diversity diversity of our offense. I like the way things are spreading out. I just really would like to see us continue to run the ball. Yeah. I think Pacheco and and Delaire, they uh they complement each other very well. Now I will say this winding it down. How did we get our win? Running the ball. Mm-hmm. That said, yes. both teams, if they establish the run, this could be a low scoring game. Mm, I, uh, yeah, and, and the yeah, reason why it's, it's not based on firepower, I'm basing it on controlling the clock. Our run defense is pretty good, though. Yeah, I know. Y'all's are isn't that great. No, it is. Who are your corners, though? Uh, Sneed, and we have that seventh uh, round guy that that took care of the Chargers. I think the last name is Watkins. And then you know you got Ma- better, you got Ma- McDuffie. Y'all better our put safeties. Sneed on. Uh, y'all better. Put we'll Sneed we'll on. have we'll have Thornhill and and Reed helping with Adams. Um, so y'all y'all gonna double Adams? Not necessarily. Maybe bracket coverage him. You know. Okay, because I'm more say, zone versus man. Ooh, with one linebacker on Waller. Oh, uh, we have two linebackers. You still have another safety. Yeah, that's true. But remember, and we play we play a third corner sometimes in that third linebacker position. So we have another cover guy out there. But you know, normally with Willie Gay and Bolton as the two linebackers, obviously Gay still suspended. So you got uh, Harris out there who's been playing really well. Yeah. Yeah, you would uh, know that y'all were, you know, weak at that position. So. Yeah, he's not missing him. And then what I need to see is uh, I'm tired of seeing the pressures. I want to see some sacks. I just want to see Chris Jones do something stupid again. Uh, you know, give. I don't give think you. Some... I don't think you will see him do anything like that again this year. You think Andy got that taken care of? I think the team took care of itself. That's true. I, I just think he was taken care of because it didn't because I Sunday guarantee night. you, I guarantee you, Tom Brady was trying Chris Jones in that game. I guarantee you, I, and I Chris didn't you. take the bait. So I believe you. You know, but you know, the Buffalo game's coming up. But you know what I'm really looking forward to, and it's down the line is that Cincinnati game because if we were that pissed over that the Super Bowl loss, wait till we see the Bengals again. True. True. It's it's, it's going to be a great season, one way or the other. Oh yeah. Now, on a side note, real quick, I wanted to add this on to our to our show. What were yes, your sir. thoughts on the way the Dolphins handled Tua? Man, you know what? When it comes to player safety, I get that the NFL's all gung ho, rah rah about player safety, but they're kind of using that uh, medical staff member as a scapegoat. Sometimes you miss one. Sometimes if a player says, hey, I'm I'm good, I can go back in, that's a judgment call. Do you pull them? Do you not play them? Or do you say, okay? I mean, that's really between that doctor and that player. And how convincing was that player? Think about it like this. It isn't about a head injury, but J.J. Watt, they just started his heart back up again, and he played Sunday. You don't hear anybody saying, oh, that doctor should be fired. The man did not have a heartbeat for a few minutes. They started his heart back up, and he played. But would would um, that doctor be fired if on said Sunday, Watt's heart stopped again? Oh, in a heartbeat. No pun and intended. He, <laughs> well, that's exactly what happened, though, with Tua. Tua yeah. the Sunday before, woozy. Thursday night he played and he was throwing up gang signs that didn't mean to. <laughs> yeah. Um. Again, that's part of that concussion protocol. He passed whatever protocol was put in front of him. So I'm gonna go back. I'm I'm I'm, I'm gonna use Patrick Mahomes' two big injuries as an example of why I think the Dolphins handled it wrong. So we're going to go back to 2019 Monday Nighter at Denver. 
and my man that's the game where he yeah rolls his, yep, did a quarterback sneak and rolls his kneecap to the right popped it back in place the dude ran back to the to the locker room and begged to come back in the game because everything was fine the team was like no we're not going to chance it the, you know the the season is bigger than the game you're bigger than this one game. Granted, they kept him out for a couple more weeks just to make sure because they didn't know if those tendons were stretched. But he's double jointed, so technically he could have came back in the game and probably nothing would have happened. Then go back to 2020 when we were playing the Browns in the in the playoffs, and my man tackled uh, Mahomes around the neck and kind of choked him out, kind of sort of in a way. And mm-hmm. he got up and got woozy, and then Chad Henney had to come in and finish the game. And that's where this, you know, Henney thing's possible when he's in there. Right. Came out. Again, I guarantee you, because he didn't have a, he did not have a, a concussion. And they were saying that um, Tua didn't have a concussion on Sunday. It was his back. Um, I think they said what neck happened, and back. Well, what happened Thursday was neurological. Yes. And it could have been the bottom of his head and the top of his spinal cord Mm -hmm. that made, you know, his arms do those crazy things where I thought that he had broken his hand. You know, why he's he's playing less than four days from the original where he was woozy. I mean, he 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 stumbled going back out. He fell back down. You know, Mm -hmm. these players are not meat. And that's how I feel that they that Tua was treated. He was treated like a, a thing, you know, a piece of, you know, like a cattle. You know, he, you know, we just get back out there and do what you're supposed to do, and when it's this game type of thing. I don't. And, agree, and I, I feel you. I understand where you're coming from. I guess what we need to know is: was it a question of, "Hey, you're fine, get back out there," or was it, "Hey, I'm fine, let me play"? Doesn't matter what the player should not have any choice. And I agree with you. And that's why the Patrick Mahomes uh, thing makes sense. He said he could get back out there, and they were like, hell no. No. He should not have any say-so. The coach should have said no, period. That's where I'm going with that. That's where I'm going with that. It wasn't just on the the, doctor uh, that released him. It's on everybody. It's on everybody. that The doctor is independent of the team. The coach has final authority. of the team, but still works for the NFL. Right. So the you're right. The doctor should have said yes or no. He went by what he felt. He says he's okay. That That's when he goes to the coach. He says he's okay. What do you want to do? The coach should have said, no, we're not playing It should have week. never been the doctor's choice. But the doctor should have said, okay, great. You passed coach. He can't come in. That should have been the doctor's response. That's why Not, I feel that I feel they use the doctor as a scapegoat because they should have came down on the Dolphins too. I agree, and I'm sure that that they will. They're, that this whole thing is not done yet. No. I, I don't think. I, I know they're doing independent, and they've actually. I don't know what they've changed, but they've actually changed the rules again on the protocol. Hey, so, to the NFL. like, I'll be surprised if Tua comes back in the next couple weeks. Like, I, I would not want to be that head coach and put him on the field. Because what's going to happen, and until they know exactly what happened, that man, we're going to see somebody die on this field. I mean, that's why the Raiders have been starting Mac Collins. Oh, uh, Hollins, excuse me. Um, Mac Hollins, because... Who's he? Uh, he's second on the depth chart behind uh, Hunter Renfro. Renfro got oh, dinged so in he's the a wide receiver. Game. Yeah, he and Renfro hasn't played for a couple weeks. They're being sure and they're being careful. Right, which is what they should. But what what really scared me is to see the way his neurological signs were after you know during that game, and he didn't get hit hard. He didn't get slammed to the ground. Yes, his head bounced a little bit, but it was. I've seen. Thornhill's shot on Mike Evans was harder yeah. than what what Tua took, and Thornhill got flagged even though he hit all shoulder, didn't even touch his head, his face mask or his or his helmet on that shot. 
I, I've seen more violent hits than that. And to see that reaction, like I said, I'll be surprised if Tua, this could be career ending. We, we don't know. That's a very scary, scary injury, in my opinion, on on what happened that Thursday night. Yeah, let's hope it's not career ending because, you know, we've seen that with uh, – it wasn't necessarily concussions, but it was a plethora of injuries that uh, took out Andrew Luck. He decided, hey, you know, life is a little bit more important than taking these hits and retired. I mean, it took out a lot of players. I mean, it took out – Troy Aikman, it took out Trent Green, it took out well Aikman Roger was here for Stomp. a long time. Uh Steve uh-huh. Young is another one in, in that example. Yeah. He got a lot of dings. Especially towards the end of his career. Yeah, I'm surprised he knows where he is after all them hits he took from Warren Sapp. Right. But, but yeah, I mean, I I I, I, I agree with you, but not 100% because I feel that the Dolphins should share in some of this responsibility. So I, I hope that you're right and when they all this will. goes out. They will. I'm sure there's there's a fine, something. And don't let another player get injured off that team. And I will say this about the Dolphins. I, I like their coach. He's a character. He reminds me of a, a cast member from the Big Bang Theory trying to coach football. And <laughs> Thank I mean, you. I would, I would he, never get that picture out of my head now. He looks like the biggest geek on earth, and he's got a clipboard. <laughs> yeah, he he's living. You know, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not uh, discrediting his coaching. Oh no, prowess no, definitely or, not. or anything. But um, I think he's living off the talent that's on the field. You yeah. know, I'm 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 kind of looking forward to him playing against another coach who's. St- who plays chess and not checkers, so to oh, speak. Oh, he will. Remember, he's in Belichick. And just have, true, you know, uh, but I'd like to see how, you know, Belichick countered. I mean, I know they've already played and they won, but, you know, Belichick countered him. You know, Hill didn't have a whole lot of – I think Hill only had like 58 yards that game or something like that. Um, but, you know, like against Andy Reid's, against – you know, the L.A. Rams coach, the 49ers coach, you know, those guys that are strategic. Yeah. The the, the Buffalo Bills coach. I know yeah, they, they just played they, them too. Yeah, they're not – that's the thing. They are not going to beat New England or Buffalo again. I guarantee you that. This year? <laughs> this year. And, and, and I know, you know – Especially you, not without Tua on the field. I know we're heavy on the AFC West here, but talking about the AFC we, uh, East – they are not beating Buffalo again. That left a bad taste in Buffalo's mouth. We'll see. I mean, I'm going to give them their props. They they did what they needed to do. Yeah, but... I'll give them their props. And, you know, like I said, I like their coach. And, you know, I'll take it a step further. If you're coaching in the National Football League, you've got to have some degree of talent. Even though there's a lot of bad coaches, if you've made it to the NFL level as a head coach, you've done something right. Yep. You may not be cut out to be a head coach, but at least you've done something right to get there. Agree. So, full disclaimer, if it doesn't work out for Josh McDaniels, uh, I just need you, Mr. Davis, to call 913-991-6004. I got you. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. He thinks Lamar Jackson's a better quarterback than Derek Carr. Don't do it. I, no. I, I, hey. I'll have him watch film on Lamar. That, I, that's what I want you to do every play. But Devontae's open. I don't care. Run. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's about all the time we got for today. Oh, uh, I love talking football. I could do it forever. But I know y'all don't want to hear me talk forever. But we will be back next week. We might even have some controversy with us again next week. You never know. Because we're slightly warped. Yes, yes, we are. All right. For Big Show, I'm Rick. Thank you all very much. Like, share, subscribe. We'll see you next week. Stay positive. Stay blessed.